Hi, my name's Emma, and let's talk spooky stuff. <laughs> Welcome back to another monthly wrap up. You guys seem to love these videos, so I'm going to keep them coming. Although a lot of this month was dedicated to watching some extremely disturbing French cinema. I will link that video up above because I'm going to be talking about that through my letterbox and what I watched. And it was an intense moment for me. Many intense moments were had, uh, but I am very excited to get into that with you. First, I do want to say 13 Days of Horror. I have finalized the list and here it is. I'm so excited because there's so many foreign horror movies on this list and I'm so keen to break them all down with you. You guys had so many recommendations, so many cool, interesting looking films that I felt like you chose that really suit my taste. So thank you so much for that. I kept a list of narrowed down like 90 of them that I'm going to watch anyway sometime. I just can't wait to dive into them. So thank you for that. And I'll definitely keep some of the films I didn't include this year for future videos whether that be hidden gems because there's so many cool films I never heard about you guys are very clever so thank you so much for that one film that is very interesting on this list that doesn't really fit is Black Christmas but I did pick this because I have been asked so many times to watch it I never watched this remake of it of course I've seen the original and then I did a review of the newer film but in that review a lot of you asked me or urged me to watch it so when someone suggested it I thought what the heck? So there is a fun one in there, but all of the other ones are really interesting and unique films and most of them are from foreign countries. So I'm very excited to explore them with you. We're going to get straight into Letterboxd, but quickly I want to thank today's sponsor, which is Skillshare. I get a lot of questions about the production quality of my videos and I tell you what, Skillshare is such a life saver because I am a visual learner and every time I want to scrub up my skills, there's always a new course to discover that is inspires me to push my production quality further. Skillshare is an online learning community for creatives where millions come together to be inspired. They offer thousands of informative classes on things like video production, photography, and creative essays, all great tools to make your own reviews at home. I personally recommend this class by Sorella Moore. YouTube success builds an authentic channel that's worth the follow. She is great at inspiring you to find your own way to keep your videos creative and of course, authentic. The first 1,000 people to use the link in my description will get a free trial of the Skillshare Premium Membership. Thank you again to Skillshare for sponsoring creators like me. And let's get on to Letterbox. All the way down to the start of the month, I didn't watch a lot of movies this month in comparison to my other months. I still watched a lot of movies, but I watched a lot of TV as well. So we'll get to that after this. First, I watched Don't Deliver Us From Evil, Evil Rain, The Waltz, and Devil's Advocate. To the Daughter of Devil, uh, those five are for my devil video that I did about satanic films. Um, so definitely check that out if you want me to go into detail. But because a lot of you guys have probably seen that video, I don't want to keep going on about it. A lot of what I watch is just for the channel. I don't get to watch a lot of films that I feel personally inclined to. I watch a lot of stuff I hope you guys will find interesting that I can make into videos. So I will be skimming over some of those other films that I've already gone into detail about. And um, I'll be going into detail about, I can see a couple up here, uh, films that you have asked me for reviews that I haven't done. I watched Lyle. Um, I mentioned this one in a video, but it is about, um, it's a shorter film actually. Actually, I think it's like 100, there you go, 65 minutes. Um, it is about a couple. I feel like that probably gave too much away. I swear the blurbs give so much away. Um, anyway, it's about a couple that move into an apartment and um, things are strange about the history there. <laughs> That was so vague, I'm sorry guys. But it's a very grief-stricken film and it's done in a very interesting way, very raw, very emotional, and I think it's definitely worth a watch. You can watch it on Vimeo and pay the filmmakers directly. I watched this next film, I'm not gonna pronounce the name again because I pronounced it correctly the first time and I don't wanna butcher it a second time. This is a Brazilian film about a small uh, village uh, that is torn apart by violence and it has these really interesting aspects of horror in it that you're just not expecting and I would highly recommend it, highly, highly recommend it. I watched All About Evil. This is Natasha Leone uh, at her finest, maybe not. <laughs> um, it's a very strange film, like independent film uh, that's almost like so kooky and like meant to be funny comedy, but it's like, it's just so strange. 
I kind of liked it though. I did enjoy it. Uh, it is about a woman who takes over the cinema that her, like the theater that her father used to have and um, people aren't coming in as much and she gets people excited again about the cinema by creating her own slasher films. How real they are, you'll have to watch to find out. Um, also, sorry about the adverts. Someone, <laughs> someone the other day said that they would pay for me to get premium. I turned them down. I said, oh my God, no, I need to do that. I'm sorry. So I'm sorry I haven't done that yet. So you're going to see ads. I'm really sorry about that. The next film I watched is The Sect. I watched this again for my devil video. Uh, and it is about this teacher who takes in this man that she hits with her car. And then all these weird circumstances happen and you realize how much of her fate was involved in that first interaction. Very vague, um, but it's very spooky and the representation of evil in this one is really cool and something special. I watched I'm Thinking of Ending Things. I didn't rate this. I wasn't really sure when I watched it. I did watch this and I did a whole video and I listened to the audiobook. Um, and in the end, I, I think I really liked this film. Uh, I wasn't someone who loved the book. A lot of people really loved the book. Um, and a lot of people were telling me like, oh, you don't know Charlie Kaufman uh, if you're trying to interpret his uh, films. But that's what we do here. We like to break them down. I love him. Uh, but yeah, very interesting. It is obviously on Netflix. It is based on a book. It's about a couple that go to the boyfriend's house to meet his parents. Let's say that. There's a lots of twists and turns and it's a very ambiguous film. I watched The Owners, which is uh, everyone saying it's like the UK version of Don't Breathe. Uh, but the trailer gives away everything, which I hated about this film. As I said, as a UK film, it's very like laddish with these uh, this group of youths that feel like they've been wronged by higher society. Uh, and they break into this big farmhouse uh, in order to steal from the safe. But when they are in there, the owners come home early and things switch up. Um, I liked, what's her name? I should know her name. I did not watch Game of Thrones. Um, Maisie Williams. I thought she was really good in this. She carried it. I think she's great anyway. So cool to see her in more horror films. I watched The Babysitter <laughs> Killing Queen. I actually watched this with my patrons. Shout out. Um, and we were unsure what was going on the whole time. This one has received mixed reviews, hey? I, I saw a whole lot of people because I didn't see this until the following Sunday and it came out on the Thursday and a whole bunch of people were saying how amazing it was. It was better than the first. It is nothing like the first. It is bizarre in its own way. I can't believe this film exists. Uh, <laughs> I don't even know how to describe it. It is uh, involving the same guy from the first one years later and um, he's in high school and uh, there's like a new girl and uh, he goes off to this party and then he's faced with evil again. That's like the vaguest way I can say it, but there's so many different aspects in this film. It was a roller coaster and I'm, I gave it the two and a half because I'm really not sure how I feel about it. I think I need to watch it again, but it was like an assault on the senses, really, wasn't it? Um, I watched Orphan. I watched this for my Does This Offend You stream. We did a stream about um, children, their representation in horror movies. If you have not seen Orphan, watch it. Please watch it. This is not my first time watching it. I absolutely love this film, but I don't want to talk about what it's about because I think it's best you go in completely blind, but you will thank me later. It is one of the gems. Um, I watched Trouble Every Day, um, and this is Hidden. This film here is Hidden, um, which are for my French um, extremity films. Um, I watched The Broken Hearts Gallery. Uh, cinemas are open here. Very different situation where I am in the world, um, but I was invited to the premiere of this. It was such a mess. I was not a fan of this. I normally, I only go to these if I was really into the film, but because there's not a lot of films being released where I am, the cinemas are open, but there's nothing to watch. Um, the lights are on, but no one's home kind of situation. Not really. <laughs> the next film I want to talk about is Spiral, just because a lot of people wanted to know my thoughts. I did a Patreon review on this one and I was actually kind of disappointed by it. Um, Jeffrey Boa Chapman, um, who's in it and stars as the lead. I actually really love him. He was in the show Unreal. And I thought he did an amazing job at what they gave him. 
I just think that this film, uh, it just is very messy and there's a lot going on and it should have been simplified. Also, I did bring this up when I first uh, spoke about the film, but the poster gives away the film. <laughs> um, it's meant to be about a couple that move to a town and, um, you know, strange things start happening and it seems like the town is trying to draw a wedge between their relationship. I like the representation, obviously, of LGBT um, Q plus in this film, but I feel like uh, I mean, and this is probably the exception to the rule, to be honest, but a lot of LGBT uh, focused horror movies use that as an aspect as to why they are acting a certain way or violence or things like that. And I guess it was good it wasn't in that way, but I think it made me even more let down that it was such a messy, confusing message. Like, what was the point of the film? And uh, I don't want to say too much to give anything away, but there's just random aspects all over the place. And yeah, I kind of was let down. I really liked the start. Um, I liked the characters and I thought the acting was great, but it was a little bit everywhere. There is some um, violence involved with like the flashback scenes, which I thought if they just focused on that aspect, it would have been a lot more interesting, but then they go into like paranormal stuff and it's just all over the place like I don't know what they were trying to do um, at the end of the day but I mean that's just me I know a lot of people did like the film I watched We're Not Here to Fuck Spiders uh, which I talked about recently in a gem video I watched this as part of a film festival and I really enjoy this film I was really surprised it's a low budget found footage film um, recording a drug house and the interactions within that a lot of assault and violence and I was, I was on the edge of my seat, especially when there's a sword <laughs> that they order online and that gets all delivered to the house and you go, this can not be good. <laughs> See a sword in a horror movie, it never ends well. Um, but I was actually really impressed uh, and if you guys ever get the chance to see it, which I asked uh, what was going on, if there was any distribution, um, you know, internationally, and there's no plans yet. So hopefully one day you guys get to see it. Um, I watched The Dark. Um, this is one that you guys suggested to me over and over and over. And oh my God, is it a hidden gem? It really is. Um, it is a beautiful beautiful looking movie but also a beautiful idea about a girl who's like a monster and she uh, haunts this wooded area um, in her old home and there's a boy who arrives who was kidnapped and their interaction because she, he has a visual impairment and he cannot see her for what she truly is, only really what she truly is. Um, it's a beautiful idea and yeah, you need to watch it. I think it's really good. I watched One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest. I watched this because I watched Ratchet. Um, and if you wanna know my whole thoughts on that whole series, <laughs> I have a whole video on that and that was a lot to watch. <laughs> I watched VHS, I watched it with my Patreons. Watching it back, I thought that I really liked this the first time, but it's not that good of a time. It's actually, it does not age well. The next film I'm a little bit scared to talk to you guys about, to be honest, because there's been a lot of controversy about it. Um, but this is my channel and I'm just gonna tell you my opinion and um, it's fine if we don't have the same opinion, that's totally cool. I don't expect you to. A lot of people say like, I don't have the same opinions. I don't mind, it doesn't bother me. Um, but I do ask that you respect <laughs> that my opinion is different. And also remember I'm coming from a different place as in a different country, um, Antebellum. <laughs> I got there finally. I liked this film. Not many other people liked it, let's see. Oh look, here we go, I see like one one. I'm, I was kind of shaking my head by the end because I was so stunned that um, it didn't move people in the way it moved me but uh, each their own for sure. Um, Antebellum is interesting because it's not what a lot of people expected and I think that's what hurt it for them. But for me, I try not to watch the trailer. I wasn't really expecting anything um, and I just went in blind. So the film is about a really successful author and um, her life framed in the past and in the future. I can't say too much because the whole point of it is it's meant to be a little bit confusing um, and I don't want to say too much more. If you've seen it, you know what I'm talking about. Um, do I think it was a perfect film? Hell no, but uh, I thought it was moving and I thought it set out to have a strong message. But if you're not into strong messages in films, I, I guess just don't watch it. <laughs> it might not be for you, but for me, I thought it was really cool and very empowering and I, I really appreciated it. 
Um, but I know that's not everyone. And I know some of the characters came on a little bit strong, um, just like sexualizing and stuff, like random things that had nothing to do with the main message that kind of took away from that. Uh, but I think that it was a really clever idea and the fact that it hasn't been done before. Correct me if I'm wrong, has this been done before? The same, you know what I mean? If you've seen it, you know. Please let me know down below what other films would be like this because I would love, just the structure is what I'm talking about. I'm not talking about the actual, you know, storyline. I would love to check them out. I watched The Devil all the time. A lot of you guys were asking me for a review of this. Again, another film I loved that not many people liked, apparently. Um, really enjoyed it, did a whole review on it. Um, I watched The Ordeal, which you would have heard me talk about in my French, uh, if you haven't watched my French brutal, brutal, disturbing movies from France, 20 of them, um, The Ordeal, and that for me was the biggest <laughs> jaw-dropping moment, and the whole reason I loved doing that video is because of this movie. I absolutely loved it. Um, when it, how can I say love when it's so disturbing and so sick? But it's done so well. I can't believe it's only got a 3.1. My friend Nocturnal Horrors in here gave it a 3. And Bia, she gave it a 1. Betrayal. Um, I liked this film. <laughs> you guys have knocked me down a bit. But I was really taken aback by this film. Because it explores the idea of male sexualization. And that doesn't happen much. Especially in horror movies. Um, and... It just broke me, man. I don't know. I definitely viewed this a different way to many people. Let me know if you've seen it and what you thought. So the next films I go through in detail. This is what I said, guys. This month was just dedicated to that video. My whole month <laughs> for that one video. Um, so I hope you enjoyed it. But uh, the next films I watched was Them, Satan, Irreversible. Oh my God, I actually lay down on the ground after watching this. There is a rumor that they have this uh, frequency that plays in the first 30 minutes during this film. And I have to say I believe it because I was gagging, like no joke. I've never felt so... It wasn't sick because of that scene and that's why it's so crazy. It was sick because of the nausea of the camera work and something was just going on that just did not make me feel good. I totally believe that. Um, so that's, if you haven't seen that, it's a film about uh, an assault and revenge and it's all in reverse. The scenes are in reverse. Um, there's Ghostland. I watched that. Uh, oh, the film that isn't, the only film that isn't the French film in this is The Return of the Living Dead. I watched this with my patrons. They chose it, not me. <laughs> I'm not one for zombie films and this is like peak 80s cheese nudity, like it's like boobs and men crying about being bitten. So <laughs> um, a lot of people love this film, but it's just not for me. But I get the hype because it's so kitschy, um, but maybe not my kind of kitschy. Uh, I then watch Man Bites Dog and I Stand Alone, both French films. Sorry, I get into this problem every single month where a lot of what I talk about I've already spoken about before and that's why sometimes I skip the month. So let me know in the future if you do want me to skip the months like this or if you're happy for me to still go over. I mean, I still mentioned a lot of films that I didn't cover like Antebellum, Spiral, um, The Owners. <laughs> that's pretty much it. But for this month, it's really hard to say what I'd recommend because there's so many different kinds of films. I would say check out The Owners because it's, it's an okay film. It's not the best film ever, but I think it's a pretty solid, like, watchable horror. Orphan, if you haven't seen it, you need to see it. Um, One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest, if you've never seen that film, I love it so much. It's such a good movie, and I totally forgot. I feel like it's the male version of Girl Interrupted, in a way. Um, The Devil All the Time, Antebellum. See, this is my personal taste, though. If you haven't seen them, definitely watch them and make up your own mind. The Ordeal, if you can handle brutal cinema, please check it out. I'd love to know what you think. Let me know how many of you have seen Irreversible and how many refuse to see it. I'd love to know that. And that's kind of what I would recommend uh, at its core. Let's get into TV. So this month I started the new season of Wentworth. I'm actually not up to date. I think I'm two episodes behind. It comes out every Sunday here. Uh, if you have not heard of Wentworth, it is an amazing TV show, an Australian TV show about um, a female prison. Uh, it's not like Orange is the New Black. It's actually inspired by a series from the 80s called Prisoner on Cell Block H, uh, which is quite famous here in Australia. Uh, but it is this amazing, oh, at the start it was kind of more compelling in a drama realistic way, but as it's gone on, it's very soapy, I have to admit, but it's really good and I absolutely love it. It's one of my favorite TV shows of all time. It's done so well. If you're into like prison kind of TV shows, you have to at least check it out, Wentworth. I believe 
mainly all of the seasons are on uh, Netflix in America. So definitely check it out if it's interesting to you. But I started the new season, which it comes out here week by week, the newer season, um, which they have to finish the whole new season for it to go to America. Finally, we get something first. <laughs> um, but it is pretty soapy. But again, I just love revisiting these characters. If you haven't seen the new season of Wentworth yet, do watch it because it's just oh, it's so good. I love it so much. I re-watched The Haunting of Hill House and I did this obviously because of the new season coming out very soon. There will be a video up on my channel any day now, so please be ready. Um, and when I say any day now, I mean in like two days, so be ready for it. Uh, but I wanted to re-watch it before and watching the new season. Uh, I absolutely love it. I forgot how good it was, how beautiful it was how oh it's just my heart I cried a little bit afterwards if you have not watched The Haunting of Hill House by Mike Flanagan you need to check it out there's a reason it was hyped up so much obviously it's not for everyone it's more of a romantic horror drama um but it's a really well told story and the characters are so solid and the idea behind it and like the themes and message are really it's really beautiful and really well done. I then watched Ratched. See, I watched a lot. I did watch a lot. I watched the whole of Ratched. I was only gonna watch one or two episodes. I wasn't sure what to review that day. And I watched one episode and I was like, I need to see what happens. The show, I did a whole video on it, but the show is so weird in the way it entices you because all of the characters' motivations are so closely interlocked. Um, so it was really interesting to see what would happen next. And it's also very easy to follow, which I liked. Um, it was kind of like an easy, like like popcorn movie you know what I mean uh, but I do think that there's a lot wrong with the series and there's no reason it should have ever been connected to One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest um, but I haven't watched American Horror Story in a few seasons so I think this gave me my little like Ryan Murphy fix without going back into American Horror Story I do recommend just watching the first episode and seeing what you think some people loved it some people hated it but I think you need to watch it to figure out if it's for you which is unfortunate but it's very much suited to people's personal tastes. The last thing I watched this month was Pen15 season two, which I was so excited about. If you don't know what Pen15 is, it's a comedy TV show that's like a satire, sketchy show, not sketch, but it's a satire show with two comedians who play younger versions of themselves in um, high school, like yeah, early high school. Um, and it is, it is the most, it's absolutely the most um, because it's set in like the early 2000s. Um, yeah, early 2000s. And it's very much when I was like the same age. So they go through all of the same things. They like all the same things. It's almost disturbing how accurate it is. Um, and I love satire. So it just really ties into everything I like. And um, I love season one and I didn't know season two could be that cool. What I really like about it is it starts off making fun of kids and like different things we used to like and all that kind of stuff. But it actually has some really serious um, messages in this new season. I'm um, talking about like divorce of family and broken families. But if you're into satire comedy, things like Kath and Kim, if you're Australian, um, I don't know, it's it's just really interesting, especially if you grew up at the same time as me. I'm 30 years old, if you didn't know. <laughs> um, so if you're around my age, you may find it funny. It's an American comedy and I've never had an American comedy so similar to my lifestyle. So I thought that was really interesting. That's it guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for hearing out my thoughts. I love doing these kind of chatty videos. So let me know if you're happy with these roundups and hearing my thoughts that aren't planned out or scripted. I do like doing them for you and I will keep doing them if you keep watching them. I hope you're having a great day and I'll talk to you guys very soon. Stay spooky, bye.